No, I don't waste no time Hello, what's going on guys and welcome back to a new video for those of you that are new to the channel my name is joshua dangle george a social media marketer and online coach i have my own advertising agency called brandpreneur where we help mainly e-com stores and e-com businesses get more sales and more customers through facebook advertising and i have my own education business where i basically teach you guys on how to do the same so how to start your own social media marketing agency how to get your first clients, how to prospect, how to get those clients on or potential clients onto calls, how to get results for the clients, and so on and so forth. And about, I think like two years ago now, I recorded a video called like my SMA structure explained or something along those lines. And um, it done quite well. It got quite a lot of views. I think it is in my top 10 most viewed videos. Um, and I still get quite a lot of questions like, is that still the same structure that you use right now? So I rewatched that video and it's actually quite fun to see how much has changed in um, just two years, basically. Um, and everything is, like I said, it is completely different. The structure is completely changed. Uh, back then, I had a business partner who I no longer work with. And um, now I actually have a head of operations that does a lot of the... The, the work for me and he literally just runs the entire agency basically you know like I cannot uh, describe how much things have changed for the better by employing a head of operations which uh, is Elliot and um, like I said yeah the structure has completely changed so I just thought I would uh, record a quick update video for you guys on what the structure is like now and just in all transparency what we are going to change moving forward in order to basically you know scale to that next level so what we are currently doing is um it's basically a multiple six figure mark you know we are nowhere near the seven figures um it is something that we are aspiring to get to um you know it's it's going to be a very long hard road um and i know that we will need to change things within the agency within our offer within um basically the way we do things in order for us to get to seven figures so uh, that is basically what we're going to be discussing today and before we just start you know what while i'm talking i'll basically set up the four pillars of sma here but before we start when you do social media marketing or when you start your own advertising agency no one is telling you that you need to be ha a seven figure you, you need to build out a seven figure agency right and this is a conversation i have quite often with people when they mention oh yeah you know um, I need to be doing X amount per month or per week or whatever in order to be seen as a success. I always think success is subjective. You know, if you're happy with a six-figure salary or even less, you know, let's say hypothetically speaking, you live in a country where, um, you know, you don't necessarily need to have a lot of money. Let's say you live in uh, Indonesia, Bali or something like that. And you have two or three clients that are all paying you a thousand a month, so you're on roughly three k a month. You know that is, you could live like a king for three k a month in countries like Bali, etc. You know you do not need to have a six figure salary if you're there. Of course, you know if you live in New York, if you live in uh, some parts of America, if you live in London, etc. Then yes, you might need to be earning a bit more in order to have a you know affluent lifestyle. Um, so, you know, it obviously it depends on where you're at, where you're from, where you're uh, based, you know, what your aspirations are, etc. But no one is forcing you to earn an X amount with your agency. And just because you are earning, um, you know, less than what you see other people on the internet earning, it does not necessarily mean that your agency is a failure. Or like I mentioned in previous videos, that six figure mark, if that is something that you're not aspiring to go to, no one is forcing you to earn six figures, you know, with social media marketing, it is extremely easy to get to that mark. You know, it is easy to get to that point because essentially, if you are charging 2,000 a month, all you need is four clients and you're at six figures a year, you know, provided that you keep those clients, of course. But if you are charging 1,000 a month, again, eight clients, it's still not, you know, it's not difficult. It's not, it's not rocket science. It's not, you know, something that only a select few can do. You know, if I can do it, you guys can definitely do it, right? I'm not saying it's easy or why well, I'm actually saying it's easy. I'm not saying it's, it's, you know, obviously there's, there's those gurus, right? Oh, yeah, this is the easiest thing in the world. All you need to do is this, this, and this, and you'll be at six figures in no time, blah, blah, blah. Like, yes, you will need to put in a bit of effort, but it's not the most difficult thing in the world. It's actually very, very doable. And I think that mindset also plays a big part in this. 
you know, I think you need to, to sort of rewire your brain, if you will. Again, I don't want to make it make it sound like it's extremely difficult to do, but you know, if you're not in that mindset of I can do it, then yes, it will be difficult. But if you understand that it's possible, if you understand the value you're providing your clients, if you can understand that you are worth that much, it's extremely easy to sell at 1K, 2K, even 5K a month. Um, my large retainer that I ever sold at was 10K a month and 15% rev share. Um, unfortunately, that client only lasted um, October, November, December, January, February, so that is uh, five months. So, you know, it's not the longest clients I've ever had, but, you know, still, what I noticed is that this client was a little bit different. It was very much old school, you know, paperwork, uh, proposals, etc. But other than that, the actual closing of this client was no different than signing, you know, just an average client for Zoom for a thousand a month. And it is all it has all got to do with the amount of value that you can provide. And with regards to the service delivery with that ten thousand a month client. I didn't do anything different than I did with the thousand a month clients or the two thousand a month clients, but it was just the amount of value that I can provide. They knew, yes, you know, to bring in this agency, it's ten thousand a month, but with this service, we can actually scale to you know the next level with their agency. And uh, in all transparency, this was like an eight figure like media buying business. So um, you know, for them, ten thousand a month was it was pocket change basically. But anyway, uh, back to this story. So the structure of our agency, these are the four pillars of SRMA, right? Outreach, sales, project management, and project development. I've discussed this in so many videos. You know, you guys need to be dreaming this by now. Um, basically, outreach is where you reach out to potential businesses. You see, you know, if there's a relationship that you can build it, if there's something that you can help them with. Sales is basically where you pitch your service and you get those those potential clients in or those leads in to become actual paying customers or clients. Project management has everything to do with communication, anything that you know basically surrounds the agency life. Send them reports, um, you know, making sure that the administration part of the agency is all up and running. If the client requests changes, wants meetings, etc., everything you know basically falls on the project management, and then project development is where you actually run, you know, the, the service, which in my case is Facebook ads. So, in terms of, I'll just write it down as I go along, just so you guys understand, you know, what we're doing and uh, what I do, and you know what you can do or what the, the possibilities are basically. So, can I increase the size? Yes, we can. There we go, twenty-four, and then nice and neat in the middle there we go okay so project development is facebook ads that is our service delivery we help you know uh, like i said e-commerce stores meal delivery stores meal uh, meal prep services etc um you know we help them by getting more customers and more sales with facebook ads okay if you want to do seo feel free to do it same goes for linkedin and snapchat ads maybe I've, I've, a few there's a few um web development businesses you know within our pay program as well it doesn't really matter what your service is as long as you solve a problem, right? So basically, you know, you're solving a problem at a profit. That is your service and that is basically what you create your agency out of. Um, there's also some that do project management, uh, not project management, social media management, my apologies. So you post on the socials of the clients. Of course, that is a little bit more of a convenience offer. It's a bit more lower ticket. But again, you know, it is an offer nonetheless. And if you can help businesses by telling them, okay, listen, you don't need to worry about your socials anymore because I'm going to manage all your socials for an X amount a month. You know, you can still charge anywhere from, uh, let's say 200 to 800 a month uh, for social media management. You know, I've, because um, obviously when I started out, I did social media management as well. And the highest retainer that we ever sold social media management on was still a thousand pounds a month for post them once a day on Instagram, once a day on Facebook, and it was literally the same post. So essentially, create 30 posts, schedule it with Hootsuite or Later.com or Buffer.com, anything like that, charge a thousand pounds a month. You know, that is a very easily scalable business. But the easy thing with Facebook ads is because they can see the direct return on investment, because, you know, literally they're getting sales. Other, you know, because of I'm rolling the ads, it's easy to sort of, um, prove what you're worth and prove that you're making the, the company or the business money. Whereas with management, it's hard to sort of say, okay, well, this post got you three likes um, and therefore you've now got two more sales, right? It's difficult to sort of uh, put that into actual numbers and figures what the 
uh, making because you're posting on their socials. So anyway, what I'm going to do is describe what it's like now and then what I'll do is I'll create another situation where I'm going to describe what it is going to be moving forward, okay? So um, in terms of our outreach, we have two methods of outreach. We have our hybrid outreach system, which uh, is basically just our fancy way of saying automated, um, I can't even say email outreach anymore because it's expanded from email outreach. But hybrid outreach system, oh, I have no idea what I've done there, guys. Let me just remove that. Um, so we've got the hybrid outreach system, which, um, just to keep it simple for you guys, is automated email outreach and appointment setting. Um, so basically what we do is, at scale, we reach out to businesses with, um, like I said, email. Um, LinkedIn is also part of this system, um, and basically you know, the appointments get set through the hybrid outreach system, and for you guys, let's just put, let's just stick to cold email outreach at scale. Ask them if it's okay to send a quick video. We send them a loom, and then from there, the loom basically asks them, you know, if they want to hop on a call. So that is basically, you know, it's uh, the reason why we call it hybrid is because it's half automated, it's half outsourced because you know everything on the front end it's getting front loaded by data miners, etc. And then from there, um, you know, that is basically completely hands off. That's why it's called hybrid outreach. Okay, so. That is one method of outreach, and then we've also got paid traffic. Okay, in terms of the um, sort of like the the structure, like what we spend the most time and effort on, um, or what I should say is what we allocate the most, what generates the most clients, I'm probably best saying. It's around 50-50 now, okay? When we're going to ramp up the ads, um, we are very reliant on the hybrid outreach system, and then we're now slowly moving towards a paid traffic formula where we just augment our entire flow with Facebook ads. And at the moment, at the time of recording this, January 2000, February even, February 2021, it's um, it's 50-50. And then hopefully we're, we can move towards um, maybe 80-20, 90-10 in terms of you know paid traffic. Okay, so the sales is currently, actually let me just copy and paste this one, be easier. So we've got the same font size, etc., is a two call close, which means that we get clients on two calls. And then from there, the first call, we we basically figure out, you know, is this client the right fit for us? Uh, do we have the time, the effort, the energy, the resources to take on this client? Um, and then in the second call, we basically yeah, pitch them our service. And the reason why we go for the two call close is because a lot of people nowadays they read these these scripts and they go for the one call close, etc. And we've noticed that a lot of, um, just to put it quite simple and quite blunt, um, a lot of people are doing SMMA now. Not a lot of people can get good results. So a lot of clients that we speak to have actually worked with other agencies that have, you know, they've, they've gone through the Google courses. Um, they think they can outsource it for cheap and cheerful on Upwork. The client's unhappy. They lose the client. The client then comes to us. Uh, and the client basically has their guard up because they say, well, listen, we worked with XYZ agency. We haven't gotten the results. So, you know, what makes us need, or, you know, why should we trust you kind of thing? So what we do is we do it in two calls. The first call, we get analyst access to the ads manager and, you know, basically the biz manager, etc. We go in, we see what the previous agency has done. We see if, you know, maybe they've even done it themselves, right? Not everyone has worked with an agency before. We see what's been going on. From there, we map out, okay, what exactly needs to be done to get to their desired situation. And then from there, in the second call, we pitch that and we, we close the deal. Okay, project management. What I'll do is I'll just briefly explain project management. We keep in contact with our clients through WhatsApp. We've tried every, every software under the sun, right? We've tried Monday, Asana, Slack. Um, the only thing we haven't tried, which we are looking into is Facebook Workplace. Um, and it is something that I think could work. But for now, I think WhatsApp is quite a personal way. I, it doesn't bother me in any way that clients WhatsApp me. I don't get random messages anymore. And I think that also has to do with the fact that we are going higher ticket with our service. So it's no longer that we are getting on these micro managing clients that want to know what's going on at every second of the day. You know, we've got serious clients that we build up good relationships with. Yes, they will message every now and again, but all in all, it's not, at a point where it's distracting me or bothering me, you know, I do have my phone on airplane mode, 
more often or not, then when I switch it off of airplane mode, I'll check, I'll reply to the messages if they haven't already been replied to from our team and then from there, you know, um, that is how we stay in contact. Then in terms of the updates, because we do send our clients updates, and I do think it is really, really important to send clients updates to keep the clients in the loop as much as possible, because more often than not, they just wanna know what's going on, just so they can understand it for themselves. And if, let's say, hypothetically speaking, there's a week where the results aren't really there, then at least they know what's going on, right? And at least they can think, okay, well, um, yes, the results are not there this week, but that the reason for that is because two days out of the seven, none of the campaigns have been running because we're scheduling up a new campaign or we're setting up a new campaign and so on and so forth. But the client doesn't know that and they check the results and they see that, oh, well, last week we didn't get any sales, what is going on? You know, that is when you start getting irritated clients and where the clients say, listen, we need to hop on a call, I no idea what's going on, this and that. Maybe they click on the campaign, which you only set up yesterday and they see zero purchases, for example. They switch it off because they think, you know, you do not know what you're doing and so on and so forth. Whereas if you would have just messaged the client saying, listen, we've set up XYZ campaign, it's gonna be rolling for three days. The reason for this is because we're testing out XYZ. The client knows what's going on. Much more smooth sailing, much more calm within the agency and within the relationship between you and the client. Okay, so we send weekly Loom updates. So weekly Loom updates, where we go into the business manager, we explain the results that we've got on the previous week, the next steps for the week after, and so on and so forth. And then we've got our there we go, our bi, bi, bi weekly. Is it bi weekly or bi monthly when it's twice a month? Um, I, I think it's bi weekly, isn't it? If not, my apologies. Bi weekly Zoom update. Okay, so that is where we hop on Zoom for 15 to 30 minutes, where we just keep in touch with the, the clients. And usually that is also where we subtly plant the seed for the referrals as well. So if you're doing a good job for your clients, ask them for referrals, and you'll notice it's much, much easier to get inbound leads and uh, inbound clients because, you know, if you're getting good results for one client, chances are they know other businesses within the, you know, network, and, you know, it's just an easy way of getting clients, basically. So the bi-weekly Zoom update, keep in touch with the client, keep the clients happy, explain to the client what's going on. Also, ask the client for more ad budgets if it's, you know, scalable, and like I said, plant the seed for referrals. Project development, Facebook ads, that will not change, to be fair, that will always stay the same, okay? Now, a few things that I want to mention, um, our team is probably one of them. So in the previous video, I had a business partner. I think we had quite a large team as well. We had three people on sales. We had three people doing the project management. We had two people doing the ads, something along those lines. It was a big team and that obviously, you know, uh, ate into my profit margins. Um, yes, I was the business owner uh, and it was quite hands off. But like I said, my profit margins were slim. You know, it was a multiple six-figure agency, but I was making like two, three K a month. And it was mad. Like, listen, we'd have months where we'd hit 20K in uh, revenue. You know, obviously, yes, um, you know, we you pay tax over that and so on and so forth. But I was making 10% of that. I was like, where's this 90%? Obviously, you know, you split it with your business partner and you pay everyone, etc. But it just... For me, the, the the whole structure could be much, much leaner. So the way it's structured now, oh, that's sick. I didn't even know you had little figure uh, icons. Can we change the name? Let's see, remove all this. Can we change the name from actor? Yeah, we can. Okay, so I'll just do initials. So obviously that's me, Josh. Um, can we, there we go. So um, how should we do this? I'll tell you what. I'll place myself, can I move? Yes, there we go. So project development is where I currently am. Yeah, I focus on the back end. I run all of the ads for our clients and also for the white label service that we are running. I run the advertisements. This cost me, I would say half an hour to two hours a day, something like that. Um, it could be done in less time, but I genuinely enjoy doing it. I like getting results for our clients because like I said, um, the better results that we get for our clients, the more referrals we get, the easier it is to augment um, you know, what we're doing basically and scale our agency. Okay, then we have the head of operations, Elliot, which uh, like I said, I'm, I'm best just copy and pasting Elliot at every step of the flow. This guy literally runs the entire agency, but um, his main focus is the sales. For some reason, I'm struggling to move, there we go. So sales, and like I said, I'm probably best just putting him a project manager role because this guy's literally everywhere. Then the hybrid outreach system, um, 
it's so it's automated with software have we got like a little software cog or something that we can use to describe software maybe if you just type in software or cog maybe hey there we go so can we make it bigger there we go okay so the hybrid outreach system is is a it's it's automated with software and then we've also got um two data miners why two just because the cheapest as as i don't know what um let's see one data miner is called elisa and the other one is called kushal for those of you that are in the program you guys will know who i'm talking about can we change the initials from e to k if not I'm really bad at this guys my apologies i like the i use the whiteboard app use the for, for stuff like this but just fourth in this case let me just keep it neat because uh you guys were commenting on my drawings a lot lately saying uh drawing skills were on point and stuff so i obviously know it's, it's all good banter right but for let, yeah let's just keep it neater this time okay guys i give up that is the k for kushal okay so that that e is k for kushal reset view there we go that's actually a bit bigger so we have got two data miners that basically focus on the outreach hybrid outreach system and then we've got the software that takes over the rest then from there the looms are done by either elliot or me um if the if it's through the loom flow we've got multiple flows running one of the flows is a loom flow which is what i explained so uh, email ask if it's okay to send the video we send the video and then from there um you know we basically get them on a call okay so one of the hybrid outreach system flows is the loom flow and of course, we've got paid traffic. Have we got a little Facebook icon? Loading. There we go. Is it, can we get a black and white one? More results. Yeah, there we go. That'll do. Paid traffic as a big icon. So I'll just add that one there. Okay, so the, obviously the Facebook ads. And then the Facebook ads flow. I'm giving away all the secret sauce here, guys. Facebook ads is literally Facebook ad. Who would have guessed it? Facebook ad, Facebook ad. Then to a landing page, from the landing page, calendar page, which is just Calendly, um, Calendly integration. Zoom by 100%, please. There we go, calendar page, and then thank you page. Okay, on that landing page, we have a video sales letter. The reason for that, they don't need to opt into that. They don't need to leave their email address, nothing like that. The reason why we have a video sales letter is because we want to sort of qualify and pre-frame the lead going through the flow that we are, you know, who we say we are, we are what we do. We focus on, like I said, e-com stores. We don't focus on, um, you know, lead generation, catering companies, nothing like that. Uh, so that is why we have that VSL. And then um, calendar page, again, bunch of questions, thank you page, and then from there, the, the sales team take o takes over, which is Elliot. Um, I'm trying to think, have I missed someone here on this flow? Not really. Um, like I said, it's literally a, a two-man job lately. You know, we've got, we have got um, a few people on backup and on standby. Um, so if you go to www.brandpaneer.com, you'll actually see our entire team. We've also got, uh, we recently assigned a conversion rate specialist, which is something that I do highly recommend. If you guys are in the e-com niche, get a conversion rate specialist um, to just go through their store, go through what they're doing and see what they can optimize. And what we do is we actually charge an upfront payment for the conversion rate specialist. And literally that is at a cost for us. So. Um, basically, hypothetically speaking, let's say it's a thousand, that thousand just goes straight to the conversion rate specialist. We do not take an extra profit on that because by having a conversion rate specialist look at the flow and implement the changes in the uh, e-com store, we actually get better results because of it, because everything is optimized for conversions. So um, where should we add that guy? Let's do project development. I'll, I'll add the conversion rate specialist to project development. I really need to figure out how to do this. There we go. Okay, so there we have our conversion rate specialist. I'm not even gonna try, his name's Greg, okay? I'm not even gonna try and change that initial anymore. Okay, and then like I said, we've got a few people dotting around, but this is the main source of structure, and even the conversion rate specialist is not really part of the main team. He is an upsell that we've been using lately. 
okay so that is the structure now going forward what we want to do is we want to basically limit the hybrid outreach system and really scale with paid traffic so run ads to you know get more clients and then from there um the two core close still will stay in place but we will hire more salespeople, and then the focus will be to get one uh, person in the US because Elliot is based in the UK. So we've got someone in the US for that time zone. Elliot can do the UK, and um, obviously, you know, I understand that Elliot has aspirations within the agency as well. So eventually, we will uh, basically be moving away from the standard structure. Both Elliot and I, um, we, I will train another media buyer to either take over my role or um, what we like to call it is button clickers. So it is my structure, I go through the ads, I basically set the plan for the next steps for the ads, but we've got people to implement that for us so people can run, set up the campaigns that I basically tell them to do, okay? So I'm not setting up the ad sets and duplicating the ad sets and stuff like that, I just say to these media buyers, okay, we need to duplicate this ad set, we need to set up a new campaign here, run a catalog sales campaign for this and that and that, and then they set it up you know on my behalf then like i said get more people on the sales team to close more deals for us um, and then basically you know i oversee everything and so does elliot um, as a ceo basically uh, i focus on the back end of things elliot on the front end of things and that is basically our structure going forward to uh, scale this agency to the next level the bottlenecks at the moment are the hybrid outreach system um, so to get from zero to six figures, the hybrid outreach system is probably the, the, the only system that I recommend. I would not necessarily recommend looking into paid traffic as of yet, not until your offer is proven. Okay. But to get from six to seven figures, like I said, paid traffic is something that you will need to implement to augment the flow. And uh, like I said, you know, to basically remove any kind of bottleneck or human activity from that flow, uh, you know, to get to the next level. So paid traffic moving forward, two core closers fine, but we will need more sales closers to um, you know, basically get more deals in. Project management, um, yeah, Loom updates, we would still have to keep. Zoom updates, we would still keep as well because I do think communication is very important. WhatsApp, like I said, we could move to Facebook Workplace if we want to. Project development, Facebook ads as well. I do not recommend increasing the amount of services. I only recommend increasing your retainers going forward, which is something that we will do. So we are keeping tabs or not keeping tabs. We, should, we are um, documenting everything. So every good result we get, we are documenting. We are, um, you know, basically adding to our portfolio so that over time we can actually increase our retainer. Our lowest retainer at the moment is a thousand pounds a month. We want to increase that to, you know, let's say two and a half thousand, three thousand, four thousand, maybe even five thousand a month because hypothetically speaking, let's say we want to get to a million a month, uh, a million a month, my apologies, a million a year with our agency, which is a seven figure agency. That means we need to be making 83,000 a month. Okay, so 83,000 a month is a million a year if we are having retainers of a thousand which means we have to have 83 clients which uh 83 clients stay for 12 months which is going to be very very difficult to manage 83 clients now if we have um, a retainer of two thousand a month then we only need to have um did I say that right? Yeah. So if you know if we only need two thousand a month we only need half the amount of clients right so we're, you've got 40 clients or something if your retainer is 5,000 a month, less again, you know, and that's basically what we're, what we're trying to get to. So hypothetically speaking, if you have a retainer of 10,000 a month, you only need uh, nine clients and you're at a million, or you've got a seven figure agency, that's basically what I'm trying to get to. So the retainer needs to increase, the paid traffic needs to increase, the amount of bottlenecks within the business, so the amount of human interaction needs to decrease, um, and the only thing that we don't want to decrease is actually the amount of communication with the client because we do think that is very, very important. Now, at the moment, our service is done for you. Now, what we could actually move towards is a sort of hybrid of do it yourself and done with you. However, um, I do actually like the done for you service just so we can go in and set up the advertisements, etc. Um, and you know, basically just not necessarily teach the clients how to do it, but we just do it ourselves. But if need be, then maybe a done with you service might be the next thing to get to the next level. 
um, and charge a higher ticket for it. Maybe even do like a, in a group coaching form or something like that. But that is what we're going to be doing um, moving forward, or that is what we're going to be considering moving forward, I should say. So as of now, this is what the structure is. And um, like I said, this is a nice little update on the last video that I did. So if you have any questions regarding my structure, please do not hesitate to reach out. If you have not done so already, please check out my Lifestyle Design Community Facebook group, which is a free Facebook group that teaches you how to get started with uh, social media marketing, how to build up your own advertising agency, how to leverage freelancer platforms like Upwork, um, you know, to get your first few clients in and then scale, you know, your agency from there. Check all that out. Like I said, it's completely free. Check out my uh, free Facebook group. It will be linked in the description box down below. Any questions, let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel for more. And I'll see you all in the next video.